Well good afternoon folks and welcome to yet another video review this one of Nairobi Airport in Kenya in Africa Hotel Kilo Juliet Kilo Jomo Kenyatta International a scenery by the Flights and Development Group FSDG you're looking at the main terminal and uh, over in the left just in front of the control tower here is Terminal 2 this is the main terminal Terminal 1 that's uh, actually turned into four parts you've got the international departures and arrivals here and the domestic ones on the other part if we swing to the right side that's the cargo area separate cargo area specially built and then we have the runway huge runway though over 13,000 feet and there on the north side of the airport you can see what is now the basically the military apron but previously used to be um, the main part of the airport when it was built so let's do a few facts and figures put you in the picture so Nairobi International Airport's a joint civil and military airports run by the Kenya Airports Authority um, airport was built and opened in 1958 had a long history of um, being built under pretty horrible circumstances a lot of workers didn't get paid very much many of them died they were worked to death to actually bring this airport into what it was um, so there's a lot of bad history behind it there was also a fire at Nairobi airport which consumed part of the new terminal so they've had some problems over the years um, it was previously known by another name and it was renamed uh, Jomo Kenyatta International Airport to honour the first President and Prime Minister of Kenya that was done in 1978 um, in 1978 they completed the new terminal which was also opened by the President in a special ceremony um, the airport had a lot of devel development after it was opened um, and the runways was extended as well in 1993 British Airways Concorde landed here as part of a test to uh, check out the aircraft for high altitude performance the airport is 5330 feet above sea level or 1624 meters has a single runway runway 2406 is 13,507 feet long or 4200 meters all tarmac and the airport is located 11 miles or 18 kilometers southeast of the Nairobi Central Business District and you have flights to over 50 countries and they have some low-cost airlines that um, operate out of the other terminal Terminal 2 which I mentioned there in the corner and it also has its own ded dedicated cargo facility um, not so long ago the United States government categorized Nairobi as a category 1 airport which basically meant that they felt it was safe to fly direct flights to uh, figures, passenger figures for 2020 they had 984,769 uh, passengers and just over 2,000 aircraft movements that year and obviously that was the Covid year figures for 2014 they had 7 million so as you can see quite a difference but it's one of four major airports in the um, Nairobi area and this is the main one, the main international airport so first off you can see um, FSDG have done quite a nice job they've updated the airport certainly it looks a lot better than default um, but as with some of the other light airport sceneries they do they've not gone mad um, and everything basically outside the airport is default although it blends fairly well um, there has been talk of um, some of the textures not being that brilliant but you have to remember two things here firstly high resolution textures tend to cost a lot of money so developers don't usually buy them unless they're doing something pretty special um, and the second thing is um, that um, FSDG generally don't use high res textures anyway we've talked about many of their sceneries Mauritius is a good example although Mauritius is a, is a, a far more bigger and better product because they've done the whole island so we're looking at the military side of the airport there on the north side of the runway which used to be the old airport before the whole thing was extended and built and as you can see so it fits in quite nicely with the surroundings and we're looking towards the cargo terminal now we're looking southwest 
you've got the threshold of runway 06 down to the lower right here and as you, again as you can see it's fine it looks really good um, they've added what they needed to it fits in nice little scenery and the other thing to notice about Nairobi it's pretty flat it's very high it's over 5,000 feet of, so above sea level but uh, one of the great things about this airport is although it's pretty high the mountains um, high ground is far far away so um, it's great it, it's a controllers and pilots dream really in terms of landing so there's nothing in the way and on a clear day you can see the mountains in the distance like there for example okay so those are the facts and figures out of the way we've had a sort of a general look it's midday at the moment um, let's get a close-up look at the terminal and what's going on down cl closing the scenery so as you can see terminals look nice uh, plenty of clutter everything looks as it kind of should do apron markings are pretty good uh, you've got some of the um, stands there some of the stands have these walkways rather than the jetways which is fine again you're looking at the central area there of the terminal airways um, and remember this is a low resolution light scenery so it's not as developed as it might be say if you're looking at um, fly tampo or something like that for example trees and the shrubs lighting uh, the light poles everything's pretty much as it should be control tower over there we'll have a look at that in a minute we just head over to the domestic part of the terminal which is this part here there you are the domestic stands as you can see nicely detailed they look really nice, perfectly acceptable. Lots of uh, ground clutter. You've got these highly reflective windows. Don't think the building is developed inside, we're going to have a look. No, so there you go, the building's not developed inside. But what you have is this kind of reflection on the windows, this illusion of um, people and things going on inside. So that's the domestic terminal. Let's have a quick look at terminal 2. Again, we're going over the central approach there, which is low resolution, not terribly detailed. We'll have a look at the control tower in a minute, see if there's anything inside, but I don't think there is. So again, fairly basic. This is Terminal 2 uh, for the low-cost airlines. Car park there. Again, low resolution. Fits in with the landscape perfectly well looks really, really perfectly fine so let's go look at the control tower yep nothing inside but perfectly okay so we're looking down on some of the land side bits and pieces there got a car park buses all a bit higgledy piggledy I would like to see um, a well-developed version of this scenery because there's a lot of potential if you look at um, images of Nairobi International Airport it's quite a well-developed airport it's got a lot about it and it would be nice to see it really properly developed So let's go and have a look at the cargo terminal. Do 
airport looks fine to me. It's um nicely priced. I'll put all the details up as usual. Nothing terribly fancy, but it looks perfectly okay to me. You see, Flight Sim 2020 has such potential in the way that you can display scenery and how it looks. It would be really great to see developers taking advantage of that. A full version of Nairobi would look probably really impressive. African airports again that are missing. So we're swinging along the cargo terminal here. Again, massive aircraft stands because it's a cargo area. Plenty of places in countries like Africa where airports are missing or either not developed. So much potential for things to be done here. Rovaniemi in Finland is another example. Really hoping for developers to take the bull by the horns and really work on these sceneries and improve them. Lots of clutter. Ground markings look fine, you can see the stand numbers and you have the fuel farm directly in front of us there too. With the city of Nairobi only 11 miles away, there's so much potential to be done here to improve um, the airport and the local surroundings. Really hope FSDG have a go at this perhaps sometimes in the future. So what does everything look like um, in, the, in the dark hours? Let's have a look at dusk. Okay, so it's just after half past six in the evening local time. And as you can see, lighting looks perfectly adequate. It's in the right places. Well, my lead in lights look okay. And you've got the cities in the distance there. So we're now at the uh, main central terminal area part there and you can see the lighting is fine, it's perfectly adequate. And we still have these little lights here that um, just hang in the air. These are typical of, of a, a number of sceneries I've looked at. Um, and yeah, they add an effect, a nice effect from a distance, but when you go up close it's kind of a bit strange to see these things just sitting there floating in the air. Whereas you've got normal lighting on light poles here. Nice reflections off the terminal glass which give the illusion of it being busy inside there. Again the uh, ground markings are excellent and the blue airfield edge lights are as they should be. Let's get a close-up look at the lead-in to runway 06. So there we are looking directly ahead down to runway 06 approach path. Um, everything's as it should be there. You've got high intensity runway lighting system and the visual approach slope indicators on the left. Um, but they haven't got these default flashing um, lights that um, the default Microsoft Sober scenery has, which is good. So that's correct. Just looking to the right there, you can see the cargo area. Lighting is perfectly adequate. Let's go and have a quick look at the military side. So this is supposed to be the military side. Uh, it also looks like a bit of an aircraft graveyard as well to me. But that uh, no, looks perfectly okay. Let's come up a bit and have a look at the lighting generally from high up. So here we are on the north side of the airfield looking towards the south. Um, same time about 25 to 7 in the evening and you can see textures look nice many airports actually look better in the sort of like the low light hours especially when the lighting's on just looks really nice uh, no complaints at all uh, night time let's have a look at it in the darkness so there we are looking at the main terminal area again it's now nine o'clock in the evening local time a cloudless sky, very dark, but uh, yet the airport is lit, perfectly adequate. All of the right areas are lit, including the outer areas. You get aircraft parking stands out here as well, which is actually, I departed from here earlier today when I did the flight down to Victoria Falls. 
So lighting, as I say, looks perfectly acceptable, just what you want. Okay, and again, looking out to the light, uh, out to the runways and taxiways, you've got your sign lighting. Taxiways all well developed and well lit. All of the areas that need to be lit are lit, which is good. There's the cargo area and the land side area next to it. Again, lighting's excellent, perfectly okay. And again, you've got this nice little illusion provided on the aircraft on the um, terminal screens here, which looks, it gives you the illusion of something going on, things inside. It's not entirely bland, which is excellent. Let's go a little higher up. Lights of the city in the distance there. So the airport's only 11 miles away. There you go. Um, again, it, uh, in, the night, in the darkness hours, the airports, these airports do tend to look better. Those low resolution textures there at land side of the terminal don't look quite so bad when you've got it at night time or dusk. And the lighting is very subtle. They've done a nice job with the lighting. Even the small low cost terminal here, Terminal 2, is more than adequately lit. And again, you've got the areas over here on the the military apron. Again, everything perfectly adequately lit. So let's have a look at dawn. See what it looks like at dawn. So here we are, 6:30, just after 6:34 a.m. Just literally just before the lights go out. Um, very early dawn. Looks much the same as it does at dusk, but it's nice having the sun there too. We're getting out on the runways and taxiways, lighting is adequate. It's a cargo terminal. You can see the fuel farm there that's nicely lit up by the sun, by the rising sun. So 7.30am, the sun's well up now. And uh, all the lights are out. There she is. It's a nice little airport. It looks really lovely. For a light scenery, I think it has more than I'd expect it to have for a light scenery. But um, FSGG have always said that um, their light sceneries generally are, they'll do underrepresented airports. Airports that aren't represented very well in the simulation, whatever version of the simulation you might have, where it's P3D, FSX, or this new flight sim 2020. Sobo left out a lot of airports, a lot of major ones too, um, but you've got developers like FSDG come along and produce light versions of airports to give you somewhere to fly into. And this is nicely developed. Okay, you don't have the high resolution textures and huge attention to detail that with the likes of Fly Tamper and so on. But for me, this scenery is more than adequate. Price is nice, it's quite cheap. So it's about 15 euros, I think. Again, I'll put the prices and details up for you. But you have everything you need. Decent runway, decent lighting in the darkness hours, taxiway signage, ground signage. Fits in nicely with the default scenery and gives you, a, in my opinion, a much more realistic place to fly into. So just a couple of quick high, high altitude views for you. It looks fine, it looks gorgeous, just blends really nicely. And there you go, another overview of the main terminal area. Looking towards the east, sun coming up nicely. And once again the military terminal area. And the, uh, the town layout just to the west of it, or to the north of it rather. So thank you for joining me, um, welcome, I hope you enjoyed that little review, just a small review of this airport to get a close look at what it is. Um, as I say, don't expect um, massive improvements, but actually you know what, it's a big improvement over the default. You've got the terminal as it should be with the parking stands and all the little bits and pieces that we expect, the airport clutter, vehicles, 
Okay, you don't have the terminal developed inside and there are low resolution textures on the car park there, but this airport is more than adequate for what we would use as simmers. And the price is right as well, in my opinion, for the product that you're getting. So as I've said, I'll put in the credits um, details of the cost and the rough cost in pounds and in US dollars and also the download, and download size and install size for you as well. So this has been a small video review of Nairobi Jomo Kenyatta International Airport by Flight Sim Development Group, FSDG. And if you like this sort of thing or you like my reviews, please like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications for when a video comes up. I generally release a video on Saturday at midday UK time, once a week. I sometimes, most often do more than one video. I've got um, three coming out this week. You'll see this review video. There will also be an adventure flight where we fly from here down to Victoria Falls in the Kenya, 7, the Kenya A320, which you see down here. And also I've got a review, quite an in-depth review of Latin VFR's Fort Lauderdale Airport for flights in 2020, which is wonderful. I just flew out of there down to um, San Martin in the Caribbean. Got a return flight to do at some point for them. And we'll have a close look at Fort Lauderdale, which is lovely, but really nice addition to the Florida scenery. So I have a website, virtualairlinepilot.org. Um, go and visit it, you'll find out a bit about me. And I update the main page pretty much once a week so you know what's coming out at the weekend. Again, it's a work in progress. I'm trying to create some other bits and pieces for the site to make it more interesting. But uh, you will get some idea of what's coming at the weekend um, on, if you look at that site on the main page. So thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for watching this review. I hope you found it helpful. Please feel free to put comments below. I'm happy to respond to them. And if there's anything else you want me to look at, um, I would be happy to do that too. Just a quick disclaimer, this scenery has been bought by myself, I own it, I paid for it, so the views and opinions expressed here are my own, I've not been paid by FSTG to review it for free, so there you go. So thanks again, and um, I will see you in the next video. This is Lee, Virtual Airline Pilot, I end up a video, another video review saying bye for now, see you in the next video.